Hello, everybody, and this is Stacy from The Advisor. Today, I'm very excited because we have a very special guest. He is part of our podcast community. He is an executive coach. It's Ben Benedict, and he is an amazing individual. He has his own podcast on our show, and he's here to talk about burnout in the office. And that's something that many people struggle with. And even people who struggle with burnout at home, you know, listen to some of the tips he has, because you could even apply it at home as well as in the office. So Ben, tell everybody a little about yourself and, you know, give us some tips on how to deal with burnout, you know, because that's such an amazing, you know, topic that everybody goes through at one point. Absolutely. And Stacey, I just want to thank you, first of all, for having me on. I love uh, what you do, and I'm honored to be here. So uh, this is a topic that's near and dear to my heart. It is something where I've seen so much suffering associated with it. This is a time where a lot of people have left the workforce. So 10 million people of the baby boomer generation have either left voluntarily, retired, um, been frustrated by systems during COVID and vacated, or felt forced out by uh, younger generations who um, wanted positions, wanted uh, increases in pay and this and that. So a lot of animosity and hurt and suffering around this topic, uh, a lot of dissatisfaction. And that's unfortunate for uh, the, the people who have left organizations in a dissatisfied way because chances are they've, bought, they've dedicated a significant portion of their life to gaining an expertise to um, experiencing the joy and the satisfaction and the fulfillment of giving that expertise to others or utilizing it in invigorating, satisfying ways to uh, to take, you know, the decades of knowledge that they have built and then given that out or, or given that value to others, um, you know, all of those things and, and the legacy concepts that come from that and then to have the dissatisfaction uh, around leaving there. So, so, uh, and a lot of intergenerational conflict in the workforce regarding that and surrounding those topics. But anyway, uh, as, as I, I just wanted to extend that reality or, or awareness, like we have talked about, awareness is such a crucial uh, component of health when, and at organizational health as well. So leaders in organizations, whether they're a mid-level manager, whether they're in the C-suite, anybody who has people who report to them and are responsible to create outcomes and are held accountable for those things. They have uh, people who they need to report to and they need to demonstrate that they're creating value, that they're, that they're helping the people in the organization succeed or their clients succeed or both. So anyway, burnout is, is huge because we have so uh, many less workers in the workforce. Yeah. Um, and then we have a lot of hurt people or frustrated people or, uh, when a generation has left the workforce and done it in a way that's not healthy or done it in a way that's like in response to frustrations or whether it's it's like their personal way of saying, you know what, if you don't value me and you and you want me to go uh, in this way, then I'm not going to give my successor tips on how to do this successfully or I'm not yeah. going to offer them a smooth transition out. I'm going to just kind of um, do that. And so there's a lot of uh, challenges on the whole spectrum. Of that. So, so burnout, I think is happening as, as you know, and, and as I'm sure many of your guests have talked about, burnout is a huge topic in the workforce and for human beings who have a finite amount of time on this earth to have their experiences, to create fulfillment, to use the skills and talents and the offerings that, that they have. Yeah. It's important to have organizational health, to, to have personal health, uh, and so that's why I love uh, talking about talking about this topic, and that's why I love uh, having this opportunity to talk with you about it, who also has a tremendous amount of expertise in this regard. You know, I, I feel like people, you know, so many people that I've spoken to that ha have gone through those situations, that they've worked for companies for years and years and years, they poured out their all their heart and energy into the company. And, you know, they feel that, you know, one, they, they are disrespected sometimes by other employees. And to, you know, after years of dedication and hard work, you know, they felt like they were stabbed in the back, you know, that other, yeah. you know, other people that are on a higher level or, you know, they, they felt like that, that they didn't get what they deserved or they didn't get the respect or they didn't get, you know, uh, paid or get that promotion, you know, after, you know, doing an exceptional job. 
and right. they were exhausted every night. They came home, you know, it was hard for them to cook dinner because they were so tired, you know, eating, you know, ordering food became a, a ritual for them because yeah. they were just exhausted, right. you know? So, you know, the family kind of suffered a little bit, they yeah. were suffering. And then in, in the long run, some of these people weren't even, you know, awarded for their efforts, you know, even a couple of words of, of gratitude, you know, you know, goes a long way and, and they didn't even get that. And many people I knew that, you know, that at, at one point they, you know, it took them a long time, but they were like, I had it, you know, I can't take this anymore. And they look for something else. And then other people will actually, you know what, I found someone cheaper, you know, so I'm going to go with them and, you know, screw you. And, you know, after right. working and doing such an exceptional job, they, their position was given to somebody at a lower level because they could pay them less. So how does that make the person feel and how much stress does that put on that person? And, and even the trust factor going into a new company or a new area you know, of industry, and you have to trust that that boss and those people around you. But you've just been hurt by a company that you thought you could actually rely on that you thought, you know, you had a, a good rapport with. Right. Yeah, you trust them. You trust them with your career. You, you come to work every day when it's hard, when it's easy, when it's fun, when it's not fun, uh, when there's conflict. You come to work every day. And you've invested years and years of your life, like you're saying, blood, sweat, and tears into doing these type of things. And uh, and it's become, and then that's the challenge too, when it becomes part of your identity and you identify yourself or you kind of solidify this sense of who you are in this role. And if you are doing honorable things, you get a lot of social uh, benefits from that. You're, you're addressed with respect in the community or family members and friends extend uh, respect for you associated with this role. And then all of a sudden to either um, have that taken away from you, or it feels like it was taken away from you, or right. it feels like it was done in a, in a way that wasn't transparent and that there were, um, you know, political considerations. It, it strikes at the core of what we talk about in, in the United States about you know, a meritocracy, you work hard, you get to the top. And, and that's not what's happening. Oftentimes you work hard and you don't get a reward. And oftentimes it feels like you're taken advantage of or exploited. Um, you know, there's the concept of uh, if you don't get rewarded for the hard work, what, at what point does it become exploitation? At what point is it a uh, kind of nefarious uh, uh, situation where we're just going to take you, use you, and then cast you aside when you're no longer worth anything? Yeah. To the company. Um, and so people want better. They want uh, they want a situation. And and and, and this has been happening certainly to uh, people of color and uh, to women in the workplace and to people who have not had um, uh, di different privileges that that are in place or different different dynamics like this, this has been happening uh, for years and years and years to people. And I think we're all waking up to the fact that we need to see the value of human beings, no matter what shape, color, uh, no matter how, how they, they show up at the table, looking at them as the most tremendous resource of the organization, because it's the people that are the organization. If you don't have people there, nothing can get done. Certainly we have AI who's kind of advancing the technological side of these things. But truly to get things done in a meaningful way, our clients are most likely people. They're most likely human beings who have a demand for a service or a product or a, a, a good, whatever it is. It's people who want that. So if we can't connect with people, first of all, the people within our organization and extend to them the respect that says you have a lot to offer uh, and then invest resources in you to help you flourish, to I'm going to invest time and 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 be excited about you coming to work and create a space where you feel fulfilled, where your talents are, are being uh, utilized in their uh, most flourishing way possible. Then we challenge the three reasons why people leave organizations. That is negative direct interactions with their supervisors. So if they have a director, you know, I'm sure you've heard that phrase that we've all heard of. Uh, yeah. People don't leave a job, they leave the supervisor. So if you're having right. negative interactions with your supervisor, you don't feel valued, it's... Uh, it's I'm going to see you later. And and another reason why people leave the organization is uh, because they don't see a path to personal professional development within the organization. They feel like they're being taken for granted. So if somebody else who in a workforce where we need workers 
is willing to pay some of their college tuition, is willing to give them more training, is willing to develop something that they're passionate about in them, guess yeah. where they're going to go? They're going to go to that space. And then the third thing, um, and this is from the War, War on Talent uh, book, which is tremendous. I recommend to anybody listening. But uh, but then the third the third one is that the role that they're in is that it doesn't come natural to them. You're taking something like a creative and jamming them in an analytical position, and then they're out of sorts. They, it doesn't come naturally. They're not feeling flow in what they do. They're not feeling a sense of fulfillment. You're not tapping into the greatness within them. Their zone of genius. They're not. You're not drawing from them the thing that they're uniquely an expert about. And so if they're if you're cramming a square into a circle. That's not going to work either. And by the time they're exhausted or by the time that they uh, can take it no longer or their health starts to suffer or they're having mental health crisis or whatever it is or a degrade in their mental health, then they're going to be out too. So the great thing is, is if you have a supervisor or a C-suite executive or somebody in charge who has positive interactions with your direct reports, that's going to keep people if you give them personal professional development within the organization that draws from their expertise and that invigorates them, they're going to stay. And then also, you know, if they are being forced to do something that's against everything that they are inside and they're yeah. empowered and plugged into that river, guess what? They're going to stay and they're going to be loyal and they're going to be grateful. And so that gratitude is going to be circular, circular because you're creating that for them. They're experiencing it. They're grateful because chances are they've had negative experiences elsewhere and they know that this this type of reality is not a given. And then all of a sudden you have the beauty of the American dream. Yes. You work hard, you get rewarded, you get great things, you get respect, you you get uh, tremendous outcomes and tremendous satisfaction and fulfillment. And guess what? Human beings are satisfied, they're healthy, and uh, and we're providing great services and we're having fun doing it. Like yeah. that's... Uh, I, I hope people are finding resonate resonating resonating with that. And I hope if you're a leader of an organization, you know, I, I would that's what I love to do is to create that in organizations. So if you're an executive or you're a leader in an organization and you're watching the people walk out the door, that's what I love to to step in, work with you, get to know how you how things have been going in that organization, then build a, a bridge into that type of reality. So that's what I love to do. Yeah. You know, and it's so important. You know, I had just, you know, spoke with someone and I was really disappointed because a lot of companies are trying to overuse AI and, you know, they're trying to, they're trying to make, <clears throat> excuse me, they're trying to make apps, you know, to, um, yeah. to yeah. take control of, um, you know, human interaction and, um, and, you know, people are trying to, work with these people they want you know you're you're calling up you want customer service you want to be able to speak with someone or you might even have a very important question let's say you're you're calling up a pharmacy and you're yeah. worried about a medication yeah. should i take this medication is it going to interact with my other medication you want to speak to a pharmacist well you call yeah. up you're on the phone for over an hour trying to get them. And uh, many times that has happened and I've gotten even disconnected. You know, I have the phone on speaker and I'm waiting for them to answer. I'm doing other yeah. stuff, you know, while waiting. So I don't get frustrated. And then all of a yeah. sudden, you know, either you get disconnected or the person comes on and sometimes the pharmacist is not in the best mood. They're frustrated. They're rude. Sometimes they could be a little obnoxious. And, you know, but then you go to the pharmacy and you see that they're understaffed. You see that yeah. they're, that the, the prescriptions are coming in from the from the app from they're coming in from from people they're coming in from all ends uh, you know and they have you know half the amount of people that they you know that they should have they should have twice as many people so now you have these people who are overworked so when you're overworked and you're stressed and you feel like you're not being respected by your company you're not going to work as hard and how many times have you really heard from people saying, you know, I can't find quality employees. Well, how are you treating your employees? You know, exactly. and, and, you know, and they're experiencing burnout because they're not getting what they need from these larger companies that can't afford it because they're making tons and millions and millions of dollars. So they can afford to, you know, give a good, you know, uh, you know, um, experience to their, to their coworkers, you know, and, but yet they're trying to find the easy way out. And is affecting their, their their the way they do things and their performance, and then customers are getting 
frustrated and annoyed. So AI for some things are good, but I think people are overusing it. They're trying to yep. cut corners when, when a lot of these companies don't need to cut corners because they're making plenty of money to begin with. That's right. And that's the thing is it, you leaders have to come to an awareness of where are they putting their resources and what's, what's the return on the investment. If you want a stable workforce that makes your customers happy, you have to invest in your workforce and you may have to pay a little more for these human uh, realities. But in the end, the investment pays off because your staff are healthy. When they answer that phone, they're, they're coming from a space of abundance where they know their needs are met. They know that they're not going to be over, overworked and overwhelmed and frustrated and angry because they're not being heard. They're not being, they're not feeling that sense of value. And they uh, uh, then sing praises to others who want to work for a company like that. So you draw more talent to the organization because, and that's what, I, and that's what I'm finding left and right and uh, today is that when uh, we provide an environment where we're not overworking staff, uh, where we're honoring their needs, where we are fulfilling those human realities and we're paying them well um, and we're meeting their needs, guess, guess where talent wants to go? And guess where word of mouth goes and in the interviews that you get as you're seeking out talent, they're saying, I heard from this person that I trust uh, that this is a great place to work. And then also your staff who are there who are overwhelmed by the reality of the positive environment, the positive work culture, the morale, the health that's saying, take your time off. Don't we're not going to call you when your when your shift is over or when when this, you know, we're not going to call you. We respect your time. Go have fun with your families. Attend your kids' sports games or your kids' academic uh, achievements. Be present when they get an award. Be there. Like right. enjoy that. Have it because when you come to work, then you you come invigorated. You say you have a sense of of loyalty to that company. And guess what? You're telling everybody that you respect come work here because it's great. Um, and and that's what, how you draw talent. That's how you retain talent. Yeah. And so there. And, and the biggest cost that most of these uh, companies are experiencing is internal. So if you want to if you want to have a fiscal a sound fiscal policy, then then quit the negatives that or have the courage to say we're going to invest in our people. We're not going to cut corners. We're not going to turn over to robots what human beings should be doing. Yes. And and and. Uh, and then it's 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 a wiser use of resources. It leads to more consistency. It leads to longevity. It leads to, to customer loyalty because they have that the experience that you described doesn't happen. They they call, they talk to somebody, they get an answer in a timely fashion, and it gives them the peace of mind of knowing this this medicine that I'm putting in my body is going to help me and not harm me. And I have trust because I know I'm not going to sit on hold for 48 minutes and then get hung up on. In <laughs> fact, uh, I'm going <laughs> to I'm going to talk with somebody within within two, three minutes. I'm going to get the answer that I need. It's sound advice. It's coming from a place where that person listens, has the time and the energy and the attention and the awareness present yes. to really hear what I'm saying instead of just funneling me into dial four for this, three for that, two for that. You know, because because in our life, we don't have that reality. That that reality is not true. I can't just dial two for this problem because guess what? This problem may be overarching and may affect multiple dimensions of my wellness. Right. So it's it, nice try. It doesn't work. So let's stop that and let's uh, let's include the human factor to the reality of what's happening here. It is the ultimate return on investment. And we need to be able to, and we need to have leaders who have the courage enough to allow that reality to be communicated to them. Yes. And to, uh, and then to create plans to pivot or whatever it is. If it worked ten years ago, it may not work today. So, so let's have enough flexibility, enough resilience, enough awareness, as we described, yeah. to say what happened then uh, may not may not work now. And let's constantly be learning and growing as leaders yes. and welcome, welcoming younger generations who may see things from a different environment and not uh, accusing or blaming or um, or ridiculing or scapegoating all the anti-generational talk of Gen Z does this, millennials do that, boomers do this. Like, let's transcend beyond that. We're all human beings. We all want to be happy. We all want to have a healthy existence. Life is too short. 
we are the, an extremely wealthy country. Let's create outcomes that are deserving of all the amazing people who have come before us to make this a reality, to, to yes. make it something we can participate in and enjoy. Yes. Why are we sabotaging ourselves in this process? Let's work together. That's a great, you know, those are great points. And, you know, I also, I was thinking also too, is one thing that I see also that I get frustrated with is that uh, many companies outsource to other companies to give, you know, to do customer service and they're given a protocol, they're taught what to say, what to do. But then when you speak with them, sometimes some of these people have either heavy accents, they're hard to understand, or they just know the protocol and they can't really give you that personalized service where if you spoke with someone who is in America, who's been working there for a long time, who understands what's going on because they're there in the environment, in the company, and they could help you on a higher level. You know, there's many times when I've called into certain companies and I've gotten outsourced and they only know their protocol, what they're taught, that, that, that letter in front of them with the questions and answers, that's all they can give you. And then you can come across, you know, I'd have to hit different buttons because I know certain buttons had people from the company actually answering the phone, even though it wasn't the, the department I was looking for. I knew I would speak to someone who was actually in America that knew exactly what was going on. And I would hit those buttons, they would come on. And even though that wasn't their department, they were still able to help me. And, you know, and I had good communication and I had good results. So, you know, and then people complain that we don't have enough of jobs in America because they're outsourcing to other countries. And so then people are, you know, struggling to make ends meet and they're not getting the jobs they need that they are actually, they probably have enough experience to do but they're being outsourced to other countries. And then these people are, you know, looking for jobs, they're struggling to find jobs that meet their qualifications. And then you got consumers who are getting frustrated because they're not getting the results they want, you know? So that's another, you know, issue that I think plays a huge role in what's going on in today's society and, and, and is creating a lot of stress and burnout also. Absolutely. So yeah, burnout comes from that of not being connected to meaning and purpose, right? So, so if we're not connected with that meaning and purpose, and we're not having that, we're not creating that reality for people who are joining our organization. If we're not creating that for them, and we're just saying dial two for this and dial three for this, and then uh, we're we're forwarding that out because it saves us how how much uh, per interaction or whatever, whatever, whatever the data tells you. Yeah, uh, you know, we need executives who look at the realities of. When the, fault, the first contact of a potential client coming in, are they receiving the finest service possible? Are they, when that first contact happens, whether it's a text to your uh, website, website, whether it's chat on your website, whether it's a phone call, uh, whatever it is, your customer service uh, right. continues there. Do you know what's happening there? And are people finding answers? And, and it doesn't take a survey to get it a lot of the time. Like just try it yourself. I would love to have... Uh, executives uh, call their own call their own service and and uh, figure out you know what is happening what is the customer experience here yeah and and know what's happening in your organization especially in the trenches of that ground level do you know what's happening there um, you know or are you just uh, drinking the Kool Aid of what are you in that echo chamber of your yes men and yes women or are you really paying attention to what's happening in the organization do you have the courage to look at the honest, actual state of your organization. And if you're seeking something better where your staff are, are not burned out, and if you are in a position of, of extreme uh, authority, like a C-suite, like a, a C-suite executive, if you are in a position of wealth and privilege, and uh, you're, you're up at the heights of these things, are you paying attention to how the impact of what your organization is doing? Like one of the key things that just happened here, the United Health, um, the hacking incident where, you know, a third of American uh, private healthcare information was hacked yes. because they simply didn't have a, a two-step authentication process for that information. They're the, one of the, one of the, the country's hugest clearing houses. They're making billions every quarter. There is absolutely no excuse. And now the government is getting involved. Now Congress has basically talked about chopping up that entire um, organization and how the other C-suite executives are being held accountable for this. So yes. 
if you can't just blame it on our IT guy wasn't good enough. And so we're going to do a training and, and fix things in IT. That's no longer good enough. Not when one third of Americans healthcare private information is now, you know, on the, the dark web or yeah. out there in the hands of what organized crime international organizations to uh, take apart our fiscal infrastructure. Like this is, it's no longer good enough to just blame somebody on the chain, fire them. And, uh, and then, and you keep driving home in your, uh, in your world of luxury. Like that's not okay. We need to have people who have integrity at these high levels who understand the impact of what they're doing and are not distracted by their own privilege, their own wealth, their own, uh, it, it blindness to yeah. the realities of what people are going through on on the ground in our nation. Our our people deserve better than that. Uh, people of every shape, color, creed, background. We all deserve better. We deserve to to have people in authority and in positions of privilege who seek to serve and uh, don't get caught in the bitter he said she said stuff that we see right. in our political environment right now. We need people of intense character who care about people. And when we have that, tremendous things open up. Yeah. And then, and, and see, when we experience, when, when people experience that, beautiful things happen, less dissatisfaction happen, less violence happens, less animosity happens, families stay together longer, uh, kids have, have more healthy environments to experience, they get exposed to more wonderful things, yes. people who are neglected in their poverty are no longer neglected in their poverty, and and, uh, and we, we create a, a, a place, a, a world, uh, a nation that is one that is filled with fulfillment, satisfaction, invigoration, the exuberance of being alive and aware of it, and an awareness and a mutual respect, a compassionate reality where we're healthier. Where we're happier, where um, and and that's not a fairy tale talk. That is yeah. the realities of what happens when people in in positions of power and authority uh, stop at nothing less than creating these healthy environments. That's that's where I get chills. That's where I get excited. That's where I love to see people who are are their spirits are being drowned in their uh, in their distraction from what yeah. really counts they're lonely and they're drinking and they're uh, angry and they can't deal and the hatred is just raging and they can't get past it and they step out from that isolated space into a space of connection and compassion and uh it's healing all around because people need leaders like this leaders need this to 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 enjoy the satisfaction and the invigoration of their role of I'm empowering my entire organization to like unleash upon this world our amazing service, our amazing goods, our amazing thing. There's no reason why we can't take care of each other along the way. Uh, and ultimately, that's the most sustainable fiscal outcome possible because the longevity and the consistency that's experienced there uh, is unparalleled. Yes. Or we can continue to nickel and dime people until um, everybody's desperate, burned out, angry, and frustrated. Um, and you can make your profits for a little while and then what you're going to retire to some island somewhere where you have to deal with the conscience of knowing that you took, but, uh, under the guise of giving, yeah, uh, you, you have to, you have to, at the end of the day, see the amount of turmoil and the amount of suffering in the world. And you haven't used your privilege or your power or your authority to really heal, to invigorate, to help. That's a very lonely and destructive place, a very depressing place to be. So this is where I love to bring healing. This is where I love to have these conversations with amazing people like you yeah. uh, who are creating this, who are, who are demanding better, who are advocating for more. Uh, it's an ex exciting place to be, and I love being in it. I, I, you know, I, I feel that we are in a place where everyone is trying to cut corners and it's working against us and not for us, you know, and, and people have to really open their eyes. These companies, these exec executives have to really open their eyes. And I love the idea that you had said, well, let's, you know, let them try these, you know, these different techniques and strategies that they're putting upon their consumers and see how they like it. You know, and yeah. and even the chats. You know, as many times I can, I wrote, I want to speak to a human. I want to speak to a human. You know, and it's like yeah. you know, and they they have the the question. 
question, common questions and answers. I don't want to hear the common questions and answers. I, I want an answer to a specific question and I want a result, you know, and, and, you know, the people in the, in the companies are suffering, you know, the people who work there because they're getting more work put on them. And they're, you know, um, you know, many of these really, like I mentioned in the pharmacy, I walked into, they had half the people they used to have and they had the apps going on. So they had prescriptions coming through the apps. They had people picking up in the, in the sides and then they had people waiting online in the store and I'm looking around and I'm seeing that you know because I've been there for a long time half the amount of people are working there and none of them had a happy face and you know and I know that they're they're not purposely trying to be rude and obnoxious they're just yeah. overworked and frustrated that's it, that's it. yeah they're, they're doing their best they, they, they and they don't want they're not happy they're, they're not happy because they probably got into that field because they like to relieve suffering to a certain degree and and they expect it to have a certain uh, amount of reward for that good healthcare benefits yeah. so that their needs are, are met um, a good wage so that they could live in a live in a situation where, where their children can eat, where they can do a certain, they can take a trip once a year. They can do, you know, they, there's an expectation there of they have something to give. It's very simple. Let's get, let's just break this down to the very simple human realities of, Everybody who is alive wants to contribute in a healthy way. They want to, they have a unique skill set, something that is unique to them that they can contribute to. And they can offer that to others in a way where it brings value. And, and we all have different um, experiences and we all have different focuses and different personalities. And, and you, uh, we need a certain amount of things in order to uh meet our needs as we grow and as we experience the, as we experience life, as we go yeah. through life. And, and there's nothing new about this. Generally we're born, generally we grow, we learn skills and talents. We have educational systems, which are designed hopefully to give us some skills so that we can pursue the things that we're engaged by and to create value for others in, in a certain way. And then we earn a certain wage and we need to be able to then, and generally what happens is we create offspring at one point, and then we want to provide for them and create a legacy uh, for the future of, uh, of that. And not just our own, but for others, we want it, you know, there's no reason why we just have to have this insular experience of I'm take care of me and everybody else. I don't care about what happens to anybody else. It, it, we, our innate desire is to, if we have something good to share that with others yes. in a way where. It, it's not just going to benefit me and mine um, unless we want to have very chaotic, uh, you know, uh, separated, oriented, chaotic uh, situation where we're taking, taking, taking and defending, defending, defending and not, you know, and hoarding, hoarding, hoarding uh, to prevent another group from from getting what we believe is ours. Like that's that's an old way of uh thinking that's that survival mode that that just leads to conflict let's put that behind us we're at a yes. place in history where there there's better people are desiring better yeah and uh, so let's get to a point where and then we we grow older and we take care of our elders who are living longer than ever who have more uh health challenges than ever because they are we're living long you know one and depending on the the statistics or the study that you read it's either one and three or one and two yes. we'll get a form of dementia after the age of 80 or 85 right and so those needs are huge so all of these things let's let's bring the human experience back into this yeah uh, stop farming out our needs and let's let's meet these needs and and ultimately we'll benefit in every way possible uh and that's not some pie in the sky thing that's a reality because when we value people, when there's a demand, there is massive demand left yes. and right for experiences, for connection, for uh, health in these ways. Let's provide that. And guess what? There's no reason why we can't be fiscally abundant in that process while we're also abundant in every other way possible, socially, intellectually, occupationally, physically, yes. mentally. Uh, let's do that. Let's create that. Oh, a hundred percent. You know, when people are mentally, physically, you know, emotionally, financially abundant, 
they are not scavengers. If I, I remember when I was growing up, people are always giving, giving, giving because they had a little to give. They didn't have to have a lot to give, but they had a little. And as long as they had a little, that scavenger mentality wasn't there. It was like, come to my house. Oh, sit down. We're having dinner, you know? And that's the, the mentality I grew up in. And then, you know, when people don't have as much, they hold on to what they have. And then that scavenger mode comes in. And I see more of that scavenger mode than anything else nowadays. It's all about me, me, me. I, 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 you know, and, yeah. and that's not the way to go. And then when you have that me, 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 I, 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 uh, anger and all those other negative emotions kind of work their way in it. And so that's not the way we want to live. That's not the way to live. You know, you want to live joyfully, happy. You want to be able to, you know, give. And when you give, you receive and blah, 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 blah. You know, you want all of that because that's the way the world should be, you know, and that's what where we have to get people to understand is that by company opening themselves up and not thinking about cutting corners because cutting corners never get you anywhere. You know, think about how can I make my employees happier? How can I make that company more efficient? And how can I make my consumers happy? You know, and that's will make a company grow and do well. You know, they don't need, you know, just because AI came into the picture. AI has been here since the 60s. It's just became very trendy and popular now because now it's not in the military. It's it's now they're using it for other things because that's where it started. It started with the military AI in the late 60s. And, you know, now, you know, people are seeing how they can use it for lots of other things, but there has to be a, a happy medium. You know, you have to really realize where the borderline comes, you know, too much of a good thing is, is you know, not a good thing, you know, and yeah. that's what people and companies, I think, have to realize too. Yeah. Prioritize, put it in perspective, bring balance. Like it says, just on your, on, on the, your background, <laughs> find balance. like there's balance, like AI was great for, it is great for certain things. Great. But all the technological advancements, they're there in order to enrich the lives of human beings. That's the goal. Yes. Uh, and so, so if that's not in perspective, if that's out of balance, if that's uh, if we don't keep that awareness and we forget about our true nature, which is one of compassion, of love, of awareness of these things, if we don't pay attention to that, we will forget and we will go 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 blind. We will go dark. We will go uh, to sleep. Yes. And let's awaken to a reality where human beings are celebrated, where we can be the fullness of what we are. Yeah. Isn't that what? <laughs> At the end of the things. Yeah. <laughs> It's so true. Now, if you had to take what we talked about today, what are some important aspects you'd like to emphasize and really bring people awareness to? So if if you are, and this is, I'm excited too, because on Instagram, I just launched a subscription. So um, if you want, if you, you've resonated with what we've talked about here and you want to have uh, more exposure to conversations like this, uh, to content, that free downloadable stuff, uh, uh, these types and this is what I'm talking about. Like, this is what I want to provide. This is how I provide value. This is how I help people have a human experience. And so, uh, so I, I've made this available. So this is something where we can, you know, and everybody needs to eat to live. So I do charge um, a small fee. You get access to this. That way I can continue to do what I love to do. I'm not here to nickel and dime you. It's not exorbitant cost. Right. It's, it's literally opens you up to coaching sessions, opens you up to downloadable content, exclusive content, different things that, that I've learned along the way. So th as far as a sales pitch that I'm transparent, that's what it is. I want you to be happy. I want you to be healthy. I want to create that in our world. In order for that to happen, I got to charge a fee so that I can feed my kids, you know, and so, yeah. but, but, uh, but it's not, hopefully not exorbitant and hopefully it's something where it's a satisfying uh, interaction that we have where we both benefit um, and it's a win, win, win that way. Right. So we're creating that positive impact. But anyway, so the things that I'm communicating there are, are ways to prevent burnout, find that meaning and purpose, communicate clearly. Let's be honest about what's happening. Be aware of the anxiety that's caused by doing that scavenger mentality. When there's yeah. not enough, when there's not enough, then I, I, then we clutch and we grasp and we try to hold on to things uh, for as long as we can. And ultimately what happens is we get into our conceptual mind. We get very concrete. We get very desperate. We get very angry. We start blaming. We start attacking. We start feeling very, very uh, well in yeah. our bodies that start to crumble as a result of it. So if you want a better way, um, 
And if you want uh, to have continue to have these conversations, to grow in this way, to grow your organization in this way, I'm happy to help and would love to uh, to have these conversations with with any listeners that are out there, especially any leaders who want better for themselves and their companies. So that's, I guess, my my two cents there. At the end of of what you can take away with it is let's continue to have these conversations. Um, invest in yourself, bring awareness to the, the realities of what you're experiencing, and you do have power to make change. You don't have to be enslaved to the idea that uh, you need to destroy yourself to get a paycheck right. for a short time uh, before your body gives way. There's better. Let's create it uh, if you don't see it in, in uh, the, the day that's in front of you. I love it. I love it. And I, it's so important that people learn these these things, especially if there are in the in the business world, corporate world. You know, these are things that are very important. You know, people have to really understand what's going on and how it's affecting the people around them. You know, and that's a lot of times people are blinded to that. Now, if they want to go to your website, where can they find your website? So you can do. There's two different websites that you can check out. It's uh, you can go to benbiddick.com. Um, you can. Go there to learn more about me and my experiences and the value that I can uh, provide to you. Or you can go to humancapital.vip. And basically what that is, is it's my company where uh, our tagline is that we believe that people are the most important part of every organization. And that's why we invest in them. Uh, So very human solutions, very human focused uh, interventions. Uh, I have a background in crisis intervention those sorts of environments that have dealt with um, the challenges that people face, uh, a lot of healthcare experience, a lot of mental health care experience, a lot of people who are dealing with uh, a lot of challenges, top to bottom, public service organizations, nonprofits, uh, for profits, all those things you can check out at humancapital.vip or benbiddick.com. Awesome. This has been amazing. I love having you on the show, Ben. You have such a huge heart and, you know, it's in the right place. And I think it's so important, especially as we grow as, 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 you know, we're, we're such a, a powerful, strong, you know, country and we have so much to offer, but I think sometimes we get blinded or the dollar sign, you know, people get blinded by the dollar sign and they really need to put people first, you know, and think about the people, you know, the people they, they, they employ the, their customers, you know, and, re- and everything else will, will snowball, you know, and, and, you know, it's, it's not thinking about the dollar bill. Let's think about people and let's think about how we can benefit the people that work for us, the people who buy from us. And, and then when, when people feel respect, they feel attitude they you know they also have appreciation and they build trust and all those things kind of snowball into a customer that's going to continue to use you over and over and over again and that reputation gets built and people and and it just grows and grows and grows and grows and that's how people will you know make strong profitable companies it's not by cutting corners and doing all these things that they're doing now that's just i think doing the opposite effect i think it's just you know it's just, it's, it, you know, they think they're doing something good, but it's actually, it's working against them. And if they don't see it now, they're going to see it soon because eventually as time come, goes on, people are going to get frustrated and they're going to look for different ways to get the same type of products and services because they're going to be very frustrated that they're not being heard and customers want to be heard, can, you know, employees want to be heard, they want to be recognized and they want to be respected. And, you know, and an AI machine cannot do that. Neither can an That's app. Right. That's right. You need an emotionally intelligent, clear committee, clear communicating executive who is well in tune with the pulse, the emotions and the experience of their employees. They make your organization. So it's time to invest in them. It's time to be aware of what they're saying and experiencing. And it's time to be responsive to that. Yes. You be held accountable when you have to show your your turnover rates, the costs, the employee retention uh, rates, and the amount of turnover. You'll be held accountable. Do you want to get ahead of it, or do you want to uh, get it handed to you in front of your board? Yes. Um, it's up to you. A hundred percent. I'd rather go the other way. <laughs> exactly. Make the change now. Let's grow. Let's be courageous. Let's do the right thing. A hundred percent. Oh, this is great. It's fun to be happy. With. <laughs> 
Well, thank you so much, Ben, for being on the show. I look forward to talking to you soon. And this has been amazing. And hopefully we we opened up some eyes and some ears and we'll see some changes, you know, because and also everybody remember to go on Instagram and check out his new program. And, you know, it's he has great ideas. He is very successful and he is excellent in what he does. So check out his Instagram page and tell everybody your handle for your Instagram page. So it's Ben underscore Biddick. I'll see you there. All okay. righty. And I'll be there too. So thank you You're so right. much for, for coming on and I'll talk to you soon. You have a great day. Great. Thank you so much, Stacey. It's always a pleasure. <laughs> Bye-bye.